What's going on YouTube? This is Mitch with Lunas Games. This is the next uh, Pole Position 2 Restore. So in this one, uh, I'm going to be tearing out the gas pedal and just cleaning it all down, lubricating it with the proper stuff, um, and just getting it back to 100%. I mean, it, this thing like sounds like a banshee when you step on it. It just, it's bad. It squeals really bad. It's super dirty in there. Um, also, the end of the previous restore, which is when I took the monitor out and all that stuff, I also did the marquee. Uh, it got cut off from the last video for some reason. Um, when my editor was encoding all the parts into a single MP4, it cut off the last like six minutes or something. Um, and in that time, I finished up the marquee, put it all back in and uh, I wrap up that video and I explain like what I just did and where we're at and where we're going you know it's it, it's kind of like the you know the full wrap up of that video but also what other parts are going on like where my head is at with this restore because this restore is huge there's so much to it um that pole position I bought was like literally parts I mean just taking parts from multiple pole positions and you know the guy gave me like boxes of stuff <laughs> and I have never built a machine before I've never restored a machine before uh, had never bought a machine before total noob right like total noob at arcade hardware and it was just like here's a bunch of stuff it should be plug and play that was the quote plug and play that was funny um, yeah anyway so <laughs> So this is going well. I'm loving it. I'm digging into it. I'm learning a ton. Um, so this is part three of the Pole Position 2 Restore. I'm going to put the um, uh, the part that got cut off from the last video at the very beginning of this one. So you're going to see it right now. And then we're going to jump into um, taking apart and lubricating it and restoring everything but painting. Restoring the gas pedal to 100% functionality. Um, the only thing I'm not going to do is uh, take everything off the assembly and sand it all down and spray it down. Uh, which I might do in the future, but at least right now it's 100% working after being lubricated and, and everything else. Because I already did it, so you're going to watch it right now. Alright, here we go. Let's do it. Pole position restore number three. <laughs> This is probably going to have to get replaced, but I'll find that out when I plug it in. I'm not going to bother doing it now. I don't even have a bulb for it, so. And, and rotate. Good. Okay. There's a piece that's going to lock it. I've got the two screws in my pocket. back in. Make sure my marquee's lined up. I'm 
try putting a glass in first. Okay, plan C. <laughs> Put the graphic in. Wow, oh, this is hairy. Oh my goodness. Okay. Put the graphic in. It's my first time doing this stuff, so I'm kind of figuring out what I'm doing as I do it. And I'm stressed out about it. She's in the first, anyways. Now I need to lock it in, of course. I don't want to go too tight because it is holding glass in place. So if I squeeze it too tight, I could crack it. Really don't want to crack it. All right, I'll give it a wash and I'm good. Some paint on there or something. shop pole position two awesome okay so that wraps up this part of the pole position two restore uh, we got the monitor in it's Wells Gardner um, had to do some heavy research to figure out um, all the different connections and styles and monitor styles um, you know by using these schematics um, I think I might have found those on cloth I'm not sure I just uh, I just Google basically, and um, I think there are PDFs. And I just download them to my to my Mac after. So I've, I've got a bunch of documents now that I can follow. I have all my paperwork that I custom drew out to, to follow you know the 
the flow path, the flow charts of, of, of everything. Now that one red wire is still, I don't know, still kind of bothering me a little bit. So I'm going to follow that and, and make sure it's actually a ground. Uh, it really shouldn't be. But it's supposed to be ground, but a red should not be ground. So I got to check that out. Uh, still have a lot to do. Still have PCB work to do. Um, still has the battery on it. Uh, as everyone knows, the pole position battery eventually leaks and eats through the traces and starts destroying the board and not good so I need to um, get that off the PCB um, I need to um, start tearing apart the moving parts like steering wheel the shifter the gas pedal I think I'm gonna do the gas pedal next I think the the next video is gonna be um, tearing out the gas pedal and just going through it restoring it cleaning it going to town on that thing Okay, so something else that needs to get done is the gas pedal mechanism is absolutely filthy. So it's being held on by right here, these two hardware connections. Very loose. This is not even original. This is. All right. See if we can pull it out. Oh, can't forget the uh, the Molex. I gotta change that connection out. Oh, at the bottom here. I think you squeeze the sides on these long flat ones. Yep. All right. Is that it? It. Okay. Here it is. Excellent. I'm going to clean in there. But I'm going to work on this. Working on arcades is great, huh? Love this stuff. That's pretty nasty in there. Take out some of the big bits. That was a pine needle. <laughs> All right, I'll wipe the rest. Make sure I get the t the uh, T molding on the edge. All right, wipe the bottom one more time. Nice. Condition 
like using this stuff for a couple reasons. Helps oil the wood without putting heavy duty flammable oil. Like I wish I could oil this with uh, the best wood oil, raw linseed oil. I have a whole bunch of that stuff. I use it for my wood carving projects and stuff. Spoons and cookses and things, but it's combustible, so not good. But anyways, I like to use that stuff because it just gives the wood a little extra, extra protection and stops it from drying out really bad and stuff. Try to be careful here because this has some delicate parts. This is one of those, you know, don't clean it too well because I want to just make sure it's still working situations. Assuming it's working. <laughs> I've yet to test it. Cobwebs and junk. Look, like quite a bit. A lot of furry stuff going on. Flip it over. Yeah, it's all. It's all under here. Oh man, that's horrific. <laughs> so nasty under there. Okay. Oh, man, this thing needs to be oiled so bad. Wow, oh, I can't believe how nasty it is down there. Chunks of stuff. Allen wrench is actually coming in pretty pretty key for this. Taking out all sorts of junk. Oh boy. This, this is like I almost want to tear it down. I mean, everything's separate because it's just unbelievable. Well, I'll show you what I'm doing, anyways. I know, uh, wiping this side of the spring, as you can see. Seems very rusty. You know what? Oh, that's brutal. I think I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go to Q-tips on this. 
Yep, I'm gonna rock that out with some Q-tips. So here's the plan. Simple green. It's working great. Absolutely amazing. It's getting right in between all the the rungs of the spring. I don't think I'm going to try it though. No, I'm going to just keep going with the wet for now. So I don't want dust to be in my spring for a lot of reasons. Because dust is basically powder. And so, if I put any oil on the spring, the dust is going to soak it up. It's just not good for business, man. Dust is bad too when humidity changes in the air. Because it holds humidity. So, during... During the summer, when the air is real humid, it's like a sponge. Cake dust like this will hold moisture and it will facilitate rust that much faster. Oh, yeah, man. We're getting it done. So this top is looking pretty good. I'm gonna do the bottom of the spring now. Just nasty, man.
This thing is getting a second life, man. All right, so the main spring is pretty well cleaned. I can do some more. I got a lot more work to do here, though. Still have to do a little more of the housing. Do this other side, the blind side of it. This was the opposite side the whole time. All right, the spring is looking really good right now. It's looking really good. Next is this one. Big difference between the two. And this spring really, well this whole gas pedal, really needed cleaning. Bad. We shall oblige. That's what it takes. So I've gone around the whole thing. Q-tips are amazing for this stuff. Right on. I'll work on that potentiometer now. It's like dead things in there. <laughs> <laughs> Dead things. Dead things, Mikey. Dead things.
being very careful of that cable. I don't have to rebuild that. Because just looking at the manual and what's necessary doesn't seem very fun. Seems pretty scary. You have to wind it a certain amount of times and you have that Allen wrench like adjustment torque and everything. I mean, yeah, scary stuff. Scary stuff. Okay. This thing's pretty clean. Okay, so next thing is the lubrication. So I need to oil this stuff up with the proper oils. All right, so page 316 of the user manual. You'll see many places for oil. Number one is Niagel. Number three is WD-40. So lots of places with number one. There's like one place for number three. Okay, I mean, many, many points. But what's used the most? Nigel. Now, Nigel is not cheap. <clears throat> I got mine from Arcade Fix It. It's like 10 bucks for like a quarter sized amount. But it's the real stuff. It's hard to find, and this is literally the factory dope. So, I went with it for sure. Okay, so I just took a picture of it with my phone, so I can keep track of what's going on. Okay, so there's oil going on the undercarriage and on the other side. So this is the Nigel. I'll start with that. The only thing under here that gets WD-40, let's get a can, is uh, the potentiometer. Uh, I could be doing this on my table downstairs, like my workbench, but... I don't feel like it. I'm just up here in the living room instead. Okay. The Nile Gel. So now, do I use my finger? Or do I use a Q tip? Hmm. <clears throat> Well, I think the Q-tip's going to absorb it more than my finger would, I would think. So, we're going to do finger. Kind of feels like Vaseline. I'm trying to put a very small amount on. You know, using my finger is good because I can actually feel exactly where it's needed. Because it feels, feels slick where I put it, obviously. I mean, I want to make sure I have enough for all the parts, but I don't want to be stingy and like go through all this, take apart my gas pedal assembly, 
and be stingy with the most important thing of doing here, lubricating it, so I'm not worried about it too much. I'm okay with using this whole thing if I have to. It's only 10 bucks. Whatever. Putting some in that little joint right there. Trying to, anyways. Yeah, the spring is called the cable cable spring. Makes sense. It's attached to the cable. All right. So this is glistening. That's good. Good times. Next, I need to do cable itself. I think I'm going to have to use a Q-tip actually to get in there. I'll do that after. Okay, this one is called the extension spring. It needs it as well. You know what's funny? <laughs> the use of a manual, I'm not gonna believe this. <laughs> the, use, the use of manual says this has to be done every four months. <laughs> every four months. Can you imagine? Oh my. Oh my. Has an operator ever done this? Ever? Ever? <laughs> ever? <laughs> Oh boy, that's just incredible. Uh, game's what, 35 years old this year. Every four months. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <coughs> oh boy, not even close. Not even close. Three times a year, dude. So this has been done a hundred times? Yeah, sure it has. So I'm sure this is well overdue. Seeing as I had to remove a bunch of fur and stuff just to even get in here. Uh, all right, I'm glad to be doing this. I'm sure the pole position's glad I'm doing it too. Okay, so I can't get all the way down. I'll have to do it from the other side, I think. Maybe I can, hopefully. Yeah, I can get there from underneath. Okay, I need to do the cable next. So the cable, I have to do with a Q-tip. I'll put anything extra I have on there. That actually looks kind of rusty, so I'll pass. Okay.
Now that's a spot I really want to make sure I get with the cable. Right here. Right in there. See that right there? When I press this pedal, right there, you see that? It actually rubs on the metal right there. Pretty scary. So I'm gonna make sure that it's absolutely set right there. From the opposite side underneath. I think you got that coated pretty well. I'm going to do uh, a cable a bit more over here. All right. Put that off to the side. Myo gel as well. Okay. So there's one spring I haven't done yet. The main spring actually. What do they call it? The compression spring. Okay. Which is on the other side. Before I do that, I need to blast the potentiometer with some WD-40. So I'm going to just make a shroud. You can actually do that better with a Q-tip underneath. Put the oil on the on the bolts. Why not? Yeah. Oh man, this gas pedal. It's gonna be so much better than it was. Pole position's gonna be money, man. It's gonna be money. Okay, now we're gonna flip this bad boy over. And work on this side. One day I might paint this. Because it's, it's looking pretty, pretty rusted and nasty. Uh, there's the other spot for that Nia gel. And uh, I need to clean this side a bit. We'll stand up. Will it? It won't. Okay. I actually need to get in there with some of that simple green as well. Oh, yeah. A little smell of cleaning chemicals at night. Oh man, there's some gnarly stuff down there. <laughs> I don't know if I could show you or not. You see that? Look at that. Look at that stuff in back. It's like yarn and fur and stuff. <laughs> uh, I gotta dig in there. I'm supposed to be lubricating that. That pin. What do they call that pin? What do you call that? The pivot pin. 
right on. The pivot pin. I'll clean the spring first. I didn't clean under here yet, like at all. So it's pretty nasty. I didn't realize I didn't clean in here. I would have done this before. I did all the lubrication. Oh well. We'll do it now. It's just such an iconic game. It's absolutely worth all this work. All the pole position. Oh, this is busting my butt. Maybe I should have went to my bench downstairs, my table. Be a lot more comfortable sitting down with this on the table. All right. I need to get in there, get that furry stuff out of there. Close my Nia gel up so it doesn't get junk in it, get corrupted. Yep, there's like yarn and stuff in there. There was, anyways. Awesome. Very awesome. Yeah, now instead of just hitting everything with WD 40. I'm using what the manufacturer suggests, what they used, because um, it does actually matter. Because different, different um, oils, different lubricants are designed for different materials. So like metal on metal, or what kind of base it has, if it's like a silica base or petroleum base, which lubricant kind of has its own, its own deal, its own fundamentals. Look at that. <laughs> and so, you know, they use certain chemicals on certain parts. Well, they use WD-40 right next to a bunch of Niagel stuff. But they didn't use WD-40 in the whole thing. You know, and that's the reason why. Nigel, apparently, it was the right stuff. It's like lithium grease and everything else. Everything's, you know, it's all different. So, the wrong lubricant can actually damage actually damage like petroleum base when it's used improperly can do damage so it's just a fact of life with machinery Going through all this trouble, I want to make sure I use the right stuff.
Hmm. I don't like that. So there's a... The cable has a... An eyelet. <clears throat> and when that reaches the edge, it actually hits. Makes like a... Changes right there. It's not smooth. Like bumps the wall. Makes a noise. Hmm. Well, if I really jack up the Nigel, I can get through that, but that's not good. I almost want to like sand that down a little bit. Hmm. Anyways, okay, so on this side, we need to do the cable as well. So we're gonna do that. We got a bunch of stuff to do on this side. Let's do that big spring. I have to do the pin. I have to do the other side of the other one there, which I'm gonna do as well. I'll be able to do that first. Make sure it's clean. Oh wow, I can see the grease on there that I put put on there before. It's like a stark difference. Let's see if I can get my light on there for you. So check this out. Look at that. The top see how the top is dry? You can see where I stopped with the oil. Perfect. That's good. Stuff is legit. Open up the now gel. Okay. What was that? Right there. Man, I wish I could take these springs off and just like dip them in Nia gel. <laughs> you know? Okay. That squeak is gone. It must have been from that one, not even from the other one. Interesting. I don't think I can get inside. Maybe I can get inside with a, a Q tip or some Nia gel. I'll do that after. I'll try to do the inside of the springs. Hard to reach places. I'll do. I'll fine tune it later. Okay. Now I need to do this cable over here. Right in here. Let's see the other side of that cable. Load this baby up. Every four months, you gotta do. This. <laughs> This is probably the first time it's ever been done uh, since the factory. I'm gonna load it up right at that point where they where they touch the side wall there.
trying to oil the whole thing up. Okay, now I'm going to rock this spring over here. really doesn't even take a lot of this stuff because it's it's like grease it really gets it done just trying to make sure I'm, I'm really getting it you know Really getting it on there. Man, that one. The cable drives me crazy. Right there. Oh, brutal. Okay, now I need to do the inside of this pen, the outside and the, and the inside. So I'm gonna grab a Q-tip for that stuff. Put a little bit on there. Get to the other side over here. Might be easy. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Put a little bit on there. Okay, so this isn't like the longest video in the history of mankind. I'm going to uh, I'm going to do the rest real quick. And I'll get back to you. Basically, I'm going to just um, take a Q-tip and try to get all inside the nooks and crannies of all the springs. See you in a minute. All right. Nice and quiet. Just get that little click on that eyelet there. But. Not too bad. Don't have any of that uh, really high pitched squeaking and stuff anymore. So there it is. Gas pedal completely. 
oil oiled lubricated with all the proper lubricants in the right spot all the different spots now I need to put it back into the machine and there's a there's a lip right here it has to interface right there make sure the molex is inside Sit her on the rails. There it is. We're just tighten the screws in the back. Sure, it's nice and snug. Nice and tight. Get that good and tight. Good and tight. Make sure it's not too tight. I think it's actually too tight. That's not good either. This stuff, this wood is like particle board, so if it's too tight, it can crumble it. Alright, it's so hand tightened, I'm gonna just snug it. That'll be enough. So I can't undo it. No, I can't. Good. I just have to do the Molex last. There we go. All set. Okay, guys. So this has been Mitch with Wilderness Games. Thanks for joining me today, or tonight, actually. Um, tearing out that thing and lubricating it all down, and and just, I mean, taking out like some furry stuff. You know, some pine needles, dead things. <laughs> Um, there was like all sorts of stuff caked in there. So that pin was just like winding up with junk. So, I mean, that's really bad, right? Because, um, obviously it doesn't belong there. Um, and all of those things are, are, um, able to pick up moisture and they hold it. And that's how rust accelerates, right? Um, now, uh, the, the plate itself, I, I think I am going to end up, uh, sanding it down and painting it. Um, the whole thing doesn't need to be done though, you know, I was just looking at it, right? And so I noticed that like the front where people's heels are is the worst. Um, so like the top. So what I think I'm going to do is um, in a future video, uh, mask off the pedal itself, right? With that rips up with that, um, with that tape, the, the slip proof tape. I think I'm going to like mask that off. Just like basically tape box over it and the rest of it is just metal and so i'll probably sand down i'm guessing so i'm going to do i'm probably going to sand it down and and spray it all down so um look forward to that in a future video uh but we're going to move on to other things uh start getting into uh, the nuts and bolts per se of this uh, machine get into the uh the power supply issue 
I've got two power supplies in that machine. I have two. So somebody already converted it from the original Atari power power supply, the power brick, which I actually prefer. I know a lot of people are like, no man, the switching power supply is the way to go. And, and I'm a noob, like they're probably right. Um, but I'm also a stickler for like original stuff, original parts. Um, that's how the manufacturer designed it. And all their schematics and flow charts match. I mean, it, it's a problem, right? So they, they, they modified it with this other power supply and I can't follow the manufacturer's information to know, make sure I know everything's working. And so, you know, um, it might be something that I don't know about where it's because I'm rebuilding this machine. I don't know. You know, it could be like, oh, well, I mean, everyone knows that you're supposed to put the 12 volts to the whatever. <laughs> I wouldn't know that, right? So, yeah, you know, we got a coin to what to do. We have tons to do with that. There's no mechs. Um, the power supply, I got two of them I got to work on. I have to figure that out. And the wires coming off, I mean, that person was like hack and pack, like unbelievable. They just were like taping them together, and that's not how it's done at all. So, um, yikes. So I'm going to have to clean all the, all those wires up as well. So this pole position is not working right now. I have a ton to do. I have to work on the PCB still. Um, the PCB still has the battery on it, the suicide battery, like from Japan from like 35 years ago, like not good. So I need to take that battery off the PCB like ASAP. So we got a lot coming up. Uh, stick around for the following installments of the pole position two restore. It's been Mitchell Wilderness Games. Thanks so much for hanging out, guys. Uh, I really like interacting with everyone, learning from everyone. I watch tons of videos from everybody. Um, I just, I just love this stuff, and I'm new to the hobby, and I'm super passionate about it. Like, I've been playing arcade games since I was, like, four years old, so I'm pumped. I own a pole position. All right, catch you guys in the next one. Later.